Hey, so just for something a little, a little bit different, I thought I'd get out of the man cave and uh, into the sunlight and talk to you a little bit about this magazine, Special Ops. Just came in the mail today and the last couple of issues, or the first, I think this is the fourth issue, right? So the first two or three issues had a lot of uh, uh, ASL uh, content. In fact, I think in one issue I counted, you know, 40 odd percent of the magazine was ASL. And despite that, it's still a great magazine and has very cool games in it. I've liked every game that's been in it so far, so it's been uh, an enjoyable magazine. And some of the articles have been pretty good as well. This one clocks in at about 35 uh, pages. It's $24.99 by the time, it, or $29 by the time it's uh, shipped to your door. The artwork, uh, you know, on the back for you know, some of the advertising is nice and creative, and the cover's nice. It's full color. There are just nine pages of articles and scenarios for ASL this time around, which is fantastic. There's a very long, detailed article about uh, Operation Market Garden, which is kind of written from the perspective of, uh, it talks about uh, It Never Snows coming out. So it's obviously written a while back and they just hadn't got a chance to uh, update that it was actually being printed. Uh, the game was in, in, in uh, it was, the game was out. So uh, you know, the article is not in regards to Operation Market Garden for INS. It's for one of the other area area movement titles that they have. There's an excellent article by uh, Malcolm Cameron on OCS and really gives you his insight as to how he fell in love with the OCS system and uh, being uh, from the Southern Hemisphere, he has a nice uh, turn of phrase uh, and, and he's a great writer. I wish I could write like he does. He does an excellent job of explaining the system and explaining uh, the key features that for him resonate and make it the operational system so engaging and interesting. Uh, Adam Starkweather writes a nice article on the IGS, uh, is it the IGS system, is that what it's called? I forget what it's called now. It's Monty's Gamble and uh, Stormover, Stalingrad and all that. Whatever series that is, uh, the area movement stuff, he writes a nice article about that and uh, also talks about the gameplay of White Price Glory, which is a World War I implementation of that system using cards and counters and area movement. And it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, I have not had a chance to read the rules yet. There are eight pages of rules, but nice, uh, you know, nice documentation for them. Uh, the typical stark weather rules layout, a lot of bullet pointing and things like that. Uh, doesn't look like, from the quick look I've had it, are too many exceptions, which is always nice. And then there's uh, a, uh, a couple of uh, different, uh, three or four different one mapper or one and a half map scenarios for It Never Snows, which is uh, very welcome. Uh, the game is, uh, well, for me it was fatiguing. I played the Germans and didn't get a whole lot of uh, support in the middle of the map and uh, we kind of kept all the reinforcements up north to crush the, the British Paris. So I have uh, stressful memories of playing that game with uh, almost nothing. Uh, so I'll be interested to see how these play out with some historical stuff as well, uh, some historical uh, adjustments to the scenarios and some uh, free setup scenarios for 101st and the 82nd and the first Paris and things like that. So that should be pretty cool too. So that's this guy. I guess I'll show you the game. You know, here's, uh, so this is White Price Glory. A really nice looking map. It's a little busy with the, I assume the shields or the fortresses or, or whatever, whatever the case may be. I didn't, have not taken the time to actually read the rules much. So you can see the map there a little bit. Uh, if I get around to playing it, uh, I'll share I'll share the details. Uh, more details with you there are uh, a very colorful set of counters and uh, obviously it comes with cards as well and so there's a whole range of cards here that influence play and you can choose your hand uh, so it's not a deck it's not a luck based situation you're actually building a hand when you play to decide how you want to approach the game and, this, and that will drive your strategy and things like that. Uh, so what else do I want to say? So it's the magazine stuff is interesting. 
I get the uh, C3i magazine. I've subscribed to Paper Wars. I received their first uh, edition with the uh, a game in it and Operation Shingle. Uh, and I received the Light of Fire magazine and I received this Special Ops magazine. So four magazines. This one only comes out once a year. And it's, it's fairly light on content this time, to be frank. Uh, but the articles are good, you know, the OCS article, if I was a new guy, I'd want to read that article. I think it'd be, would it be worth the price of admission? Well, with the game, yeah, it would be. Uh, and I look at the C3i magazine, it's great content, lots of strategy articles because they have so many games out and so many games have been out for a long time that people are writing a lot of in-depth articles. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, the new Lock and Load magazine, number 14, their issue is 65 pages long. It has a full expansion for the World of War game series uh, and a number of other counters to help reconcile a lot of the, uh, according to the new owners, you know, the silliness that uh, you, where you have to go buy Module A or Module B to play Module C because uh, you need certain counters. So they're stripping out or trying to over the next two or three issues, and they're planning on having four issues a year, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, they're popping in uh, a whole bunch of counters to help reconcile some of that for folks who don't own some of the other games, and they can just use these counters. So that's cool. Uh, planning on doing expansions for their current series, uh, series that are out. I like that. They're going to a full color mode. I like that. Uh, but the price is kind of high. It's forty some dollars, forty five dollars, I think. Uh, now, the, obviously, a lot of bitching and moaning about that pricing uh, online, and uh, a lot of complaining about the webs, the new website as well, and the the desire of the company to go to forum based uh, support on the website, which you know maybe that's uh, you know that's neither here nor there. I expressed some opinions and got. Uh, got shouted at. I was just trying to, I was excited about what I had heard from Lock and Load about what they were trying to do with the forums and the new things they're coming out with, which, uh, you know, they asked me not to say too much about it and uh, we'll wait and see if they fulfill all the things they said they're going to do. So we'll see. Uh, but back to the magazine, the magazine uh, has 65 pages of content, lots and lots of scenarios. And I, I'm, I think the biggest issue with the price I have is I think it could be Fifteen dollars less if they got the volume if they got the volume up higher, and that's one of the biggest problems I think for lock and load is they they, they struggle in that uh, I don't know how many they how many they uh, they print or how many games they print each run you know whether it's five hundred or a thousand or two thousand or whatever the case may be, but uh, if they uh, were able to get their print runs up due to the demand I think that they would uh, be able to bring. They're, they're you know skinny up their prices and uh, and get a better deal out of the printer perhaps so but I look at it in comparison to this and this is a, a nice magazine for twenty nine ninety nine uh, shipped to the door forty five bucks for twice uh, the number of pages and uh, it's got an expansion which is equivalent to a game it's just it'll be standalone if you own uh, Blood and Bridges or you could go download the World of War rules and you'll be able to play I think uh, so it doesn't seem to be that expensive uh, on a on a page a cost per page basis, and you're getting a game or a module uh, for uh, for existing for existing things that are uh, uh, available in the marketplace. So that's pretty cool. So I don't know what you think about the current state of the magazine world and the prices that we're having to pay and what comes in them. I know everyone's jumping on the put a game in a magazine and and try and sell stuff uh, mode. So tell me what you think and. Maybe uh, maybe someone out there will hear something that will resonate and will uh, end up with a good discussion. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say.